Good morning, beloveds. It is Wednesday, which means I went to the gym. And it was cooler, but muggy. So the cooler temperature didn't help a whole lot because it was muggy. And so we were just like, yeah. <clears throat> So there was this one thing that he had me doing, and I was like, I did it out in the driveway. And the next time I the next time I got around to it, I was like, nope, I'm doing it in front of the fan. It's too hot out there. All right, beloveds, it is July 28th. Our title is I Give Thanks. Our Bible quote is, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And that is from Isaiah 25, 1. Praise and thanksgiving are salutary. They are not they not only lighten the consciousness, lifting it out of sadness and depression, they elevate consciousness to a point of acceptance. Praise and thanksgiving are really attitudes of recognition. They are affirmations of the divine presence, the divine abundance, and the divine givingness. It is only when we live affirmatively that we are happy. It is only when we recognize that the universe is built on affirmation that we can become happy. I give thanks for my happiness. It cannot be taken away from me. Rather, it increases daily in my experience. It is always more and never less. I experience the joy in which Jesus proclaimed when he said, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I bless everything I contact. I bless or I praise God in all things. Today, through praise and thanksgiving, I recognize the divine presence in everything. In the midst of darkness, I shall sing a song to the dawn, for I know that the eternal light dissipates all darkness. Today, I shall recognize the beautiful and the perfect in everything. I shall call it forth with praise and thanksgiving. Blessing the spiritual reality back of all things. All right. And that really is one of the best ways. There's two, there, there are two ways to, um, to really make yourself feel better. One is to be of service, to give your time, uh, to something, to someone, to go do something for somebody else, uh, Partly because it takes the focus off of you and partly because, oh my God, is there anything better than doing something for somebody else that they're grateful for? And then there, that's the other thing. Gratitude. Um, literally counting your blessings. Just a, a couple of weeks ago, we went to see a show. Uh, it was a, tribute, a, a musical review tribute to Rosemary Clooney. We actually learned a whole lot about Rosemary Clooney in the process of that play, which was beautiful and wonderful and amazing. But it reminded me, because one of the songs that they sang was Count Your Blessings Instead of Sheep Before You Sleep. And that is a fantastic way to, one, feel better. Two, it, it really does kind of make you look for the... It, you're looking, you're actively looking for things that are beautiful and wonderful and blessings and to be grateful for. Um, and it shows you, we have a tendency to focus on the bad. It, it, it just, it is what it is. Uh, I'm hoping eventually we can unwire that wiring. Um, it's like for every nine good things that you see, one bad thing. And what do you see? You see the one bad thing. So 10 things and you've seen one bad thing and you forget the nine good things that you've seen, you know? So it's like, okay, so you just keep looking at the good because then you realize, wait, you know what? My life isn't as bad as I thought it was. It actually is pretty fantastic when I look around. So keeping a gratitude journal or keeping a gratitude list um, and you, you start out easy. It's like today you pick three things to be grateful for. And tomorrow you pick three things to be grateful for. So for one week, every day, you pick three things. But they've got to be different. They can't be the same as you've... So then you go back and you review your list. And by the end of the week, what's seven times three? 21? You've got 21 things that you've been grateful for. And maybe next week you try five. 
you know? Uh, so that's a good way to get out of any kind of non-preferred um, mood. It, you know, it's like we all have these emotions. We'd rather not have them, but they're necessary. And we just don't want to focus on them. We don't want to give them any more power than they've already got. So one way to do that is to go to look around and count your blessings. And it can be big and it can be little. That was one of the reasons why I started the photography product where every bit, every day on social media, I tried to post one beautiful thing. I've fallen off the wagon. <laughs> I really need to get back on the wagon uh, for posting the beautiful things uh, because I think it really did make me feel better. Uh, I was actively looking for something beautiful every day. So here I am talking to myself. So that's the power of gratitude. And your own gratitude and other people's gratitude just have this way of uplifting us in ways that just go beyond. And so that's what today is. Gratitude. I give thanks. And Isaiah, in Isaiah was one of the exile prophets. I, I'm hoping that by reading these quotes, it encourages you to go look the quotes up and go, well, hey, Isaiah's pretty cool. Let me read some more. Uh, o Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. There's no beginning or end to God. So, praise and thanksgiving are salutary. They not only lighten the consciousness, they do. Thanksgiving, being grateful for, lifts the mood. Lifting it out of sadness and depression, they elevate the consciousness to a point of acceptance. Because when we are grateful for things, and when we are actively looking for things to be grateful for, then we are being mindful. We are being conscious. So that mindfulness of, hey, there's something beautiful. And oh, I hadn't noticed that before. Um, praise and thanksgiving are really attitudes of recognition, mindfulness. They are affirmations of the divine presence. It's recognizing that the world around us is God because we are looking for what is beautiful and what is whole and which is another word. Perfect is another word for that. Um, it doesn't have to be flawless because sometimes that's what makes it beautiful. Uh, there are these flowers blooming right now that their petals are all kinds of askew. Uh, and they come in, you know, various shades of pink and purple and red. And their petals are not even. <laughs> but that's part of what makes them beautiful. So it's like, it doesn't have to be flawless to be beautiful. It has to be interesting. Like these flowers. I don't know what they are. Uh, I'll have to take a picture and post it and get somebody to tell me. Um... So they are affirmations of the divine presence, the divine abundance, and the divine givingness. Nature is a great way to kind of get out of that attitude of lack, that, that mentality of lack. Because you look at, nature doesn't spare anything. When trees leaf out, they're like, they leaf out. When flowers bloom, you know, they're not stingy. Uh, they, they, go all, they go all in. They go all in. And then in the winter or in the fall, they let it all go. <laughs> They're like, I'm confident that next year will be just as good. I'm, I'm going to let all of these leaves go. They don't hold on to any of them. Okay. Um, it is only when we live affirmatively that we are happy. Affirmatively. When we look for the beautiful, when we look for the interesting, when we look for things to be grateful for. Is that when you're happy? It is only when we recognize that the universe is built on affirmation that we can become happy. That's a, a, eh, affirmation. The universe is built on givingness. It's built on... And when we recognize that, and when we recognize the divine attributes of givingness that really honestly God does want us to be happy but 
we are responsible for finding it ourselves. And we can do it with other people. You know, it doesn't mean we have to do it all by ourselves. We can do it with a group of people. We just can't expect people to make us happy. Um, we can be happy with other people. And doing things with other people can go a long way to making us happy. But it's still, we got to do the work. I give thanks for my happiness. It cannot be taken away from me. And it can't. Because I'm the one that makes it. It doesn't come from other people. It may come with other people, but not from other people. And that's a big distinction. So I have a partner. Um, and I cannot say he makes me happy. But being with him does make me happy. So it's with, not from. He is... He is, a, he is a beautiful, wonderful part of my life that helps me to create that happiness. But it doesn't come from him. There's nothing he has to do to make me happy. But when he is his authentic self, and I am on my authentic self, then together we create a happiness. Okay, so it cannot be taken away from me. Rather, it increases daily in my experience. I've, I'm piling it up in my experience. So when I have days that are not preferred, I can go back and I can look. If I kept a gratitude journal, which I've tried. <laughs> I've tried. I'm just not good at writing things down. It's, that's the God honest, honest truth. This, dude, this is as close as I'm going to get to a gratitude journal. I can go back and I can look. And I can say, hey. So, I, so on days that are not so good. I can flip back through my photo photographs and look and go, look at that, look at that, look at that. And it helps to ease the non-preferred days. I'm banking the happiness in my photographs. It is always more and never less because I'm banking it. I experienced the joy in which Jesus proclaimed when he said, open quotes, I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Close quotes. Now, you can say whatever you want about Jesus. But one of the things that I will say about that, I come that they might have life. He came as an example. Because if we lived the way he did, then um, I would... Then we probably... Because he served others and he spent time with people and he did things that brought others you know it here let me teach you let me show you let me show you what you're capable of he was an example so i come so that they may have i come so that they might have life let me show you how to live that was what jesus did and have it more abundantly I come so that you can recognize your connection to the divine. Let me teach you that connection with the divine. That's what Jesus came for. I bless everything I contact. I praise God in all things. Today, through praise and thanksgiving, I recognize the divine presence in everything. I recognize the divine presence. And that's the goal there. It's like, to look around and see God everywhere, to see the spirit everywhere, to see the divine pattern in everything, including you. Um, in the midst of darkness, I shall sing a song to the dawn. So when things aren't going so hot, uh, then I sing. I sing, well, <laughs> I'm not going to sing, but I sing a song to the dawn. I know things have been good. I know things will be good, good again. That's kind of what my photo album is for me. That's my song to the dawn. It's like, look, look at this. Look at, look at all of this wonder. Look at all of this awesome. It'll be that way again. I can get through this. So when in the midst of darkness, I sing a song to the dawn. What is your song? You don't have to sing it. Like I said, mine's a photo album. 
For I know that the eternal light dissipates all darkness. The eternal light, that light right here, that space where I meet God, that's that, that place, that feeling that allows me to look around and see the beauty around me, to see God looking back at me in every living thing. Today I shall recognize the beautiful and the perfect in everything. Remember that perfect means whole. Okay? Not flawless. We're not looking for flawless. We're looking for whole. We're looking for beautiful and whole. And as I said about those flowers, what makes them beautiful is their irregularity. Is the fact that not every single petal is perfect. You know, they're slightly askew. And that makes them beautiful. I shall call it forth with praise and thanksgiving. The, go, Google um, the the um, Google the uh, there's a if, there, you've seen it with people and with dogs, and the dog one's great because it's like the before and after pictures of when you tell a dog that they're good. They, call call a dog a good boy or a good girl, um, and you've seen it with people too. The before and after pictures when you tell the tell someone that they're beautiful. Tell me that praise doesn't work. Tell me that praise doesn't work after you watch, after you flip through those photographs. So I call, I shall call it forth with praise and thanksgiving, blessing the spiritual reality back of everything, because I know God, I know spirit, I recognize spirit, and that's the mission. That is the mission, to recognize the spiritual reality back of everything. So our mission today, should we choose to accept it, is to recognize the spiritual reality back of everything. And one of the fastest ways to find it is with praise and thanksgiving. Count your blessings instead of sheep before you sleep. Thank you, Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Um, I first heard it in, um, uh, White Christmas, and then I heard it in the review, and really, honestly, if you want to go to sleep and get a good night's sleep, count your blessings. Count your blessings. Keep that gratitude list. Start with three things every day for a week, and make sure that they're different, and they can be little things. They can be little things. They can be a flower. They can be finding a pencil when you really needed one. Um, they can be somebody handing you a cup of coffee when you first walk in. Um, you know, or like my husband makes my toothbrush for me in the mornings. Little things like that, you know? And then, then add, go for the big things, you know, but start with the little things. And then realize how many little blessings you have all day long. All right, beloveds, I'm going to move into the process of my day. I'm going to encourage you to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like. Um, and it can be the same thing every day. It can be a different thing. Uh, one of the loving, kind, compassionate things that I do for myself is to get up at 6.15 in the morning and go and exercise, whatever that looks like, be it a run, a walk, a bike ride, weight training, you know, that is my loving, kind, and compassionate thing for myself. Um, and then I try and do little things, and sometimes big things, spa days. I do spas in my own house, though, thank you. <laughs> I bought a really great sugar scrub. Uh, it's called Mint Condition. And it's peppermint and eucalyptus, and it's amazing, and I just love it. And it's very oily, and I love it. So that is something that I do occasionally. You know, face masks, um, getting my hair cut, little things like that, cooking dinner. That can be a loving, kind, compassionate thing. So uh, it is It is warm. We had a, a storm come through yesterday that was a whole lot of fun. Um, so we got a bit of a break in the heat, but please drink plenty of water. Please take care of yourself as you engage your mind and your body, whatever you do. I'm trying to do it early in the morning because it's too hot later on. Um, take care of yourself and know that you're loved. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. 
always and forever. That's the beauty of grace. You can't earn it, and it can't be taken away. So open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you you do live in heaven now. It just takes the consciousness, the willingness. And gratitude is a great way to get there. All right? Okay, beloveds. Um, it's Wednesday. I know that there is a uh, book study going on, The Living of the Science of Mind. It's, as far as I know, it's still going on at 6 um, on Zoom. So if you're interested in that, please email info at creativelife.org. And you can drop in and out of that one. You don't have to join at the beginning or what have you. Um, and Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. And I'll be back on Facebook Live around 9 a.m. with you tomorrow. Please do remember, you can always check out the Creative Life Spiritual Center um, YouTube channel for any of that content. And I am the Running Rev Ryan YouTube channel. Uh... And honestly, we're both on Instagram, too, if you do Instagram. I'm the running Rev Ryan on Instagram, and we are Creative Life Spark on Instagram. So I don't know why I'm promoting the social media today. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. All right, beloved, I'm going to get off. I'm going to stop talking. Do what you need to do to make it a wonderful day, a fantastic day, an amazing day. Look for something beautiful. Look for something beautiful. Look for lots of something beautiful. But find one and share it. Because sharing makes it better. All right, beloveds. Have a wonderful day. Know that you're loved.